Hello. Ready? Hello. Hope everyone is having a great learning experience so far at Cisco Live. Yes, and welcome to this Cisco U presentation. My name is Patrick Lau. I'm a content, technical content developer working for learning and certifications. I've been with Cisco for over 25 years because I love what I do. And when I'm not busy developing technical training courses, I like to play pickleball with my wife and friends. And I'm a CCIE since 1999 and a CISSP. Now on top of mine of every nation states, C-level executives, IT management and staff, down to every one of us is cybersecurity. Even I train my, all my family members to be aware of cybersecurity. So my dad calls me every time he sees something suspicious on his laptop. And I do have Cisco umbrella and M4 endpoint installed on his laptop to protect and monitor his laptop. This is a past quote from ex Cisco CEO, John Chamber. Anyone remember John Chamber? I hope so. <laughs> this quote is true in the past, is true now, and will be true in the future. There are two types of companies, those who have been hacked and those who have been hacked, but just doesn't know it yet. In a recent uh, Cisco Umbrella security study, it shows that 61% of the organization saw a 25 increase in the number of threats and in, in the number of incidents reported since COVID-19. Probably mainly because of all the hybrid work environment happening nowadays. So I think you are here today instead of having happy hour out there because you are interested in learning more about how to become a cyber security professional to help defend against these cyber attacks to help make this world a safer place. So in the recent US labor statistic report, it shows that from 2020 2000 to 2030, the US labor department predicts the highest number of job growth will be in information security analysts with a 33% job growth from 2020 to 2030. And each year, they are predicting 16,000 job openings in security analysts each year just in the US. So to meet the high demands of cyber security professional, Cisco began in 2015, launched the first cyber security courses and a specialization exam. So in this presentation, I'll go over the history of all our cyber security training and certification from 2015 to today. And towards the end of the presentation, I will go over some practice CCNA cyber security exam questions. Now, what are the three effective pillars for building out an effective SOC or security operation center? Each effective SOC has three common traits. They need to have the right people, the staff, they need to have the right processes in place and the right tools and technologies. First, for the people, the staff. Staff include the SOC analysts, the incident response team, the forensic specialists, and the proactive threat hunters. All these job roles has a common skill, which is analytical thinking and critical thinking skills to help detect, defend, and analyze these attacks. SOCs also needs to have established processes so the staff can work in an orderly manner instead of a chaotic fashion. And lastly, the SOC requires to have the right technologies and tools to provide timely, accurate, and relevant data to the staff so the staff can respond to incident. Without any data, the staff will be working in the blind and they cannot do their job effectively. Now the Cisco Cyber Operations Certification focuses on all these three pillars to help develop effective cybersecurity professionals. 
back in 2015, if you remember, way back in 2015, that's when the first Apple iWatch came out. And in December 2015, Cisco acquired Lanco with its flagship product, Selfwatch, which is a NetFlow and an ethics product. And in 2015, that's when we developed the first cyber courses and specialization exam. The course was called S Cyber. It's a five days instructor led training class with the specialization exam. And also in 2016, that's when the great movie, uh, Finding Dory, came out. In 2016, what happened? We have a new CEO, Chuck Robbins, and he announced a global scholarship program. Two years, $10 million, global scholarship program to train cybersecurity SOC analysts. And the result of this scholarship is we created two courses with two exams. So this is the first CCNA cybersecurity certification. Two courses, two exams. The two courses are SecFund and SecOps. Both are five days ILT and ELT class. And after two years, we end up training over 10,000 new security analysts worldwide, globally, through this scholarship program. I don't know, have anyone here heard about this scholarship program? Raise of hand. Anyone been through the scholarship program or no friends who've been through the scholarship program? But we, we did train over 10,000 students using this scholarship program. So for SecFund and SecOps, we mainly use open source tool in the lab, like Security Onion. Why we use open source tool? Because it's easier for students to build their own practice lab, and less costly for students to build their own home labs. Anyone can download Security Onion for free. And the exam mainly focus on the analytical skills, the critical thinking skills. Instead of testing how to use the specific CLI or GUI of a specific tool. So it's testing more than just a tool. It's testing how you can analyze the events using critical thinking. So this is one of the lab topology from SecFund and SecOps. With Security Onion, with all its sensing interface. So Security Onion, the Security Onion version we use was version 14. It's an open source network security monitoring tool with a whole range of security tools built inside Security Onion. So one of the tools is called Bro. Bro is like a NetFlow analyzer. It captures the network traffic and convert it into Bro events. And analysts can use ELSA to view the Bro events. So ELSA is the database for storing all the Bro events and provide the GUI for the analysts to view the Bro events. In the new latest security in version two, Bro has been renamed to Zeek. Security Onion also comes with two different network IDS engines, Snort or Serracada. Of course, being Cisco, in our SecFund and SecWorld course, we chose Snort. And OSSEC is the host-based IDS engine. And Squirrel is the database to store all these uh, IDS events and for the, provide the GUI to view these IDS events and alerts. Now, fast forward to 2020. That's when the Broadway show Hamilton came out. Anyone saw Hamilton? I haven't yet, but I'm planning to in the future. <laughs> Good. Okay, so in 2020, what happened? Cisco refreshed all the CCNA and CCNP certification. So now the CCNA is how many exams? Anyone? Know? One exam. No, no more two exams, CCNA. So we created the one exam CCNA Cyber Ops certification in May 2020. It's targeted for the tier one SOC analyst job role, the entry SOC analyst job role. So it's one exam, and the course that covered this exam is called Cyber Ops. It's a five days ILT and ELT course. To make, to make this fit into five days, all the content for SecOps basically came from SecFund and SecOps. But to make it 
to fit in five days, we have to remove some of the basic networking content from SecFund so it can fit into a five days package. Anyone gonna have attempted to try this exam yet or in the future? Good luck, you can sign up for the free exam while you're at Cisco Live. It's a pretty fair exam, I think, and it's friend and neutral. Doesn't focus on Cisco security tools and products. So I think you have a good chance to pass. So in 2020, we also announced the CCMP, the professional level cyber operational certification. This is targeted for the higher tier SOC job world, like the threat hunters, the forensic specialists, and the tier two SOC analysts. So this is the new CCMP, which is how many exams are the new CCMP certification? Two exams, a core exams plus the concentration exam. So the class that supports the core exam is called Cyber Core. And it's, and it's offered as ILT and ELT. And we have currently two concentration exams and courses. One is called the Forensic and Incident Response Exam and Course. This is only an ELT only course and it's all video based, no hands on lab. The new one we are working on right now, I'm working on it at night as we speak tonight. It's called the Cyber Threat Hunting, THD Cyber Threat Hunting. And this will be a new concentration class. The exam is already out and available. And this will be an IOT and ELT class with hands-on lab. So this is the Cyber Core lab topology. In Cyber Core, we use open source tools like Kylie Linux. We also use third party tools like Spunk Enterprise. Of course, as well as many Cisco tools like Cisco Secure Firewall, Cisco Network Analytics, M4 Endpoint, and ICE. And of course, the latest and greatest, Cisco Secure X, which is our XDR solution. So we have all these implemented in the labs for Cyber Core. And for the cyber threat hunting class we are working on, this is meant for the cyber threat hunter job role in the SOC. Cyber Threat Hunter is a more senior level job role. So it usually requires some SOC analyst or incident response experience. I kind of think of this like the police detective. What do you have to do before you can be even apply to become a police detective? You have to work as a patrol officer for at least a few years before you can become a police detective. So this is like the Threat Hunter. It's more a senior level job at the SOC. So in this course, we are going to cover the basic threat hunting concepts and processes, cover the difference between threat hunting versus incident response. Can someone tell me what's the main difference between threat hunting versus incident response? Proactive versus reactive. Very good. Threat hunting is proactive. You are looking for traces of, of attacks before even any alerts is generated. Where incident response is after the fact, you already received the alert, now you are trying to control, control the attack. And we're also gonna cover the different types of threat hunts, like structured threat hunts versus unstructured threat hunts. Unstructured threat hunts is more ad hoc based. You notice an, an, an IOC being discovered by the security intelligence community. So you want to hunt for that IOC in your environment. It's ad hoc. Structure is based on you form a hypothesis. You, you are assuming something had happened and you go through a step-by-step -step threat hunting procedure. So we're gonna cover the different types of threat hunts and we're gonna have hands-on threat hunting labs using network-based threat hunting and endpoint-based threat hunting. So we don't have a date yet on when this course will be released. But as soon as I'm finished with this presentation, I get back to work on developing this course. So it'll be out as quick as possible. Now, what happened in May, 2023? Cisco U became available. And one of the new learning path that was announced with Cisco U is the SOC, Security Operation Analyst Level 1 Learning Path. This is basically the CCNA cyber certification, cyber ops, plus some routing and searching content to make this a whole learning path. 
remember when we created CyberOps, we have to remove some of the routing and switching content to make it fit into the five days. So now we create this learning path for you so you can learn the routing and switching content if you lack that experience. Any questions so far? All right, so a quick summary. Our current CCNA cyber operation exam is a one exam certification. The course that covers that exam is called Cyber Ops and it's based on using open source tool, mainly Security Onion. And the CCNP cyber certification is based on two exams, the core plus a concentration. The core course is called the Cyber Core and the concentration can either be the forensic and incident response course or the threat hunting course and exam. For the cyber core labs, we use open source tool, third party tools, and Cisco tools. Now the exciting part, practice questions. Okay, is it too small print for you to read? Let me read it. What important information that does NetFlow provide to the analysts? Packet captures? Consolidating all the event logs into a single glass of paint? It can deny an IP connection attempt to malicious network or visibility into IP flows that can help identify anomalous traffic. D, D, very good, D. Next one. What type of web-based attack uses malicious script that are injected into otherwise benign and trusted websites? The malicious scripts are then served to other victims who are visiting the infected website. Web redirection, directory traversal, cross-site scripting or XSS, or HTTP 302 cushioning. I see a furry. C. C. C is correct. Cross-site scripting. Next one. What security device is best for defending web server against OSWAP top 10 web application security risks? Low balancer, intrusion prevention system, web security appliance, stateful firewall, or web application firewall? Yeah, protecting the web server, not the user visiting the sites. Five? Web application firewall. Anyone else? Web security appliance. Okay, so between the two, how would you choose? Remember, you are protecting the servers. You are not protecting the user visiting the website. So what's the best answer? It's gonna be the web application firewall. You are protecting the web server. Okay, next one. I think this is the last one. What is the purpose of using regex, regular expression, during PCAP analysis? To deliver payloads from PCAP analysis, to define a search pattern, to reverse engineer suspicious files attached in the PCAP, or to log event data to establish a baseline? Two? B. B is correct, to define a search pattern. Very good. So these are the type of question you can expect in the CCNA exam. It's not very focused on the tools, how to use the tools. It's more on the thinking, theory and critical thinking of a SOC analyst. So very good. Thank you for attending this session. And we are looking forward for you to join this rewarding path to become a protective SOC analyst. And because you answered the question so well, look under the bottom of your chair for a sticker. For a prize, you can either get an echo or a fire stick. And I'll be around for any question and answer.